Hi, I'm Meg with Kind to History. I'd like to show you a few basic stitches that you can use to create felled seams, as well as put to use in other areas of your sewing. Let's get to it. We are going to do some basic stitches now that will be used on a lot of projects I'll be posting about in the future. First, this is a tailor thimble. It's open on the top. You wear it on your middle finger and you're going to brace well, first you're going to curl your hand up like this, and it gets braced on the side here. And then you hold it like this. And you're going to push with your whole hand as you're sewing instead of pulling with your fingers. Alright, I've got two pieces of linen here. I'm going to stitch those together with a running stitch. First, we're going to do three stitches in place and I'm using a black silk thread here so that you guys can see with good contrast what I'm doing. All right, running stitch, you just go in and out and in and out like that, in and out, in and out and it makes a dotted line and do the same on both sides. This is also the first step towards learning black work embroidery. Now for black or sorry for back stitch, we're going to go back in where we came out on the previous stitch and come through, come out a little on the other side of our needle. Can you see that? There we go. We're going to keep doing that. And a lot of times people will say, well, Machine stitching looks just the same as back stitch. So I'm just going to use the machine. But while if your back stitch is that good, it can look the same, it doesn't behave the same. Because back stitch in any hand sewing, you're actually weaving the two pieces of fabric together with thread as opposed to machine sewing, which just holds the fabric together using um, the thread wrapped around itself and in tension. Now the back side of a back stitch looks a little different. And you can see, mine's a little sloppy, but you can see how that would be a lot stronger than just machine stitching with the two threads run together. All right, so I'm going to tie this off. This is going to be a very short seam. And I'm just doing three stitches in place again. I'm going to snip. Now, sometimes st seams were felled to the outside, sometimes to the inside. And if it would be to the outside, you would want this side of the back stitch to be showing, not this one. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to pull out half of the seam allowance by pulling one thread out of this linen. That makes a nice little guideline you can see right there where I pulled that thread out. Makes it easy to snip a straight line. Do that real quick. I'm just using my thread snips because it's so easy to keep it straight right there. Right, now linen is fabulous for lots of reasons, but in this case, because you can just finger press it. Using the heat of your fingers, you can squash it, press that seam open, then you can fold this in half. This is the long part that we didn't trim and press it down. I've wrapped it around the seam allowance from before and now I'm pressing it again here and just with my fingers and it was so much easier to keep the seam on the grain line and make it nice and even and straight even though my, my stitches weren't super even right there. Now we're going to fill the seam and again I'm just going to take three little stitches and this works the same way if you're doing it from the outside where your seam will show or from the inside where it won't. Now going just barely ahead of where 
see if I can get this. Okay, so I'm just barely going ahead of where I came out. I'm going to go slightly diagonally and come up just on the edge of my fabric. And then again, slight, just like not even a hair in front of where I came out. Pull that down. And this is a felling stitch. And it's going to be not, well, that one wasn't very straight. The goal is to make them straight and evenly spaced. And this contains or seam so that that linen that just really wants to unravel will stay put. And then on the other side, it almost looks like running stitch. Now, if you've done this with your white thread, if you're a little wobbly like I am here, it won't show up. Another way to finish this, and this is shown on an extant camicia from Italy that's in the Met, is a blanket stitch. All right. It's going to be slightly the reverse. There we go. So I'm looping the thread around and going straight through. Now, it's important to note that this seam here that I'm working on is a one-fourth inch felt seam. And in the historical garments, they are usually closer to one sixteenth inch, but that would be almost impossible for it to show up on camera. Also, if you're just starting out, it's a little bit hard to make one that tiny. So don't worry if you have to start out a little bit wider and work your way towards that one sixteenth inch. And there we go. So that's what it would look like, the blanket stitch on the outside. And I was going through this fabric up into the felled edge of the seam. Hope that helps. See you soon.